Welcome back to Heroes of the Faith, a show where we are inspired by the lives of the saints so that we can become saints ourselves. I'm your host, Isaac Longworth, and uh, when I was a little kid, maybe uh, 10, 11 years old, I was given this prayer book that I would use to pray with. It was filled with different prayers written by all these different people. And uh, over time, I noticed that a lot of the prayers that I was most drawn to, these really beautiful prayers, were all written by the same woman. And that woman was St. Bridget of Sweden. Now, I didn't know anything about St. Bridget. I knew almost nothing about her. But while I prayed with these prayers that she wrote, my heart was stirred. It was lifted up to God. And so I wanted to learn more about her. And her life is is really interesting. And I thought that I would feature her, St. Bridget of Sweden, in this show today so that you too can be inspired just like I was. Now, St. Bridget, she was born on the eastern coast of Sweden, which is just north of modern-day Stockholm, and she was born in the year 1303. Now, Bridget, she came from a noble family, a very rich family. Her father was a judge. He owned a lot of property in Sweden. He was very wealthy, and uh, so she lacked for nothing growing up. Her parents were also very devout Catholics, and so they taught little Bridget uh, and her three siblings to love God from a very young age. Now, Bridget, because she was trained by such prayerful parents, she, from a very early age, uh, had a sincere love for God. She would often spend a lot of her time speaking with God in prayer, and uh, little Bridget found that God began to speak back to her. She was amazed to experience messages from God. He would speak to her through words that she would hear. She would also see images that he would show her, these visions that he would begin to show her when she was still a young child. One day she saw Jesus on the cross, covered in wounds, bleeding. And little Bridget said to Jesus, who did this to you? And Jesus responded, they who despise me. And spurn my love for them. So Bridget realized that uh, it was our sin that put Jesus on the cross. And from that very moment, she had a enormous amount of love and devotion for Jesus who had suffered for sinners on the cross. She had a great love for Jesus suffering in his holy passion. And she continued to have that devotion through the whole of her life. Now, Bridget, her mother, unfortunately, died when she was only 12 years old. And so her aunt moved in to help raise her growing up. And Bridget received the best schooling that money could buy at that time. She was an excellent student. She was very smart. And uh, when she got a little bit older, she married a man named Ulf. Now, Ulf was also a strong Catholic. He took his face very seriously and he loved the Lord. And so uh, Bridget and Ulf together raised four sons and four daughters. This big family of eight Uh, They taught their children about the faith, uh, and Bridget even taught her husband how to read. Her husband, Alf, didn't know how to read before the marriage, but Bridget had been trained growing up, and so she trained her husband how to read, and they were really a happy and holy family. They loved each other. They were a good family. Uh, Bridget continued to regularly receive messages from God. He continued to speak to her just as he had when she was a child. Now, just like her father, uh, Bridget and Alf were very rich. Uh, Alf was a cousin and uh, an advisor in the court of the king. And so the family was often hosted at the royal court. Uh, And like anyone who was rich has experienced, Bridget was tempted to spend her money all on herself. So this is kind of comforting for us. Sometimes we think that saints are perfect. Uh, But saints, even those who hear God and receive visions from him, they're not perfect. And so uh, Bridget wanted to spend all the money on herself. She wanted to live this lavish life. And at one point she brought this big, beautiful bed. She had it designed for her and Alf to sleep in. And when it was all finished, Jesus reminded her, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. That's what he said in the gospel of Matthew, because Jesus lived a poor life. He was always traveling. He never had a place to rest. And so he reminded Bridget, if you want to be like me, if you want to be a saint, you have to live simply. And so this experience reminded her to be generous with her money, that her money was not to be used all for her own pleasure. She had to use it to help the poor. It was all a gift from God. 
And so Bridget committed to helping the poor in her area, especially she felt a calling to help uh, unwed mothers and girls who were too poor to be able to get married. They were too poor to afford and start a new family. And so Bridget would help these women get into a more secure position. She also used her money to rescue girls who had been sold into prostitution in that area. And she helped them to adjust to a new life in society, helped them find jobs and find a sustainable income. And that way, uh, she was benefiting them through her generosity. Uh, So she often took her children with her. Bridget would take her children with her when she went to go and serve the poor because she wanted to train them not to just love God through, through prayer and worship, but to love him through charity as well. Teach them how to be generous to others. Uh, One of the children uh, said about this later when looking back on her life being raised by Bridget, she said, mother was sometimes reproached for taking us little girls with her. They said that we might be infected from the stench of the sick people. But Bridget answered that she took us with her just while we were still small so that we might learn at an early age to serve God in his poor and in his sick. So Bridget was a truly awesome mother training her children how to be generous and charitable to the poor. And uh, seeing the suffering of these people, these poor, these sick, these infirm, uh, they reminded Bridget of the sufferings of Jesus. Remember, she had that great devotion to Jesus suffering on the cross. And so in the poor, she was reminded of the suffering of Jesus and her love for the passion of our Lord, it intensified. She intensified her love for Jesus who suffered on the cross for her. And one day Jesus told her that throughout the course of his passion, throughout the time when he was arrested and tortured and put to death, that he had received 5,480 blows to his body. He told her the exact number of blows that he had suffered. And uh, in an expression of love, Bridget told Jesus that she wanted to thank him for each one of the blows that he suffered for her. She wanted to, in some small way, honor each of these 5,480 wounds. And so Jesus said to her, If you wish to honor my wounds in some way, I want you to recite 15 Our Fathers, 15 Hail Marys, and the following 15 prayers, which I myself shall teach you. Say these prayers for an entire year, and when that year is finished, you will have honored each of my wounds. Now, Bridget wrote down these prayers that he told her and she faithfully prayed them. And we still have these 15 prayers today. Each one of these prayers honors uh, the different sufferings that Jesus went through in his passion, followed by 15 Our Fathers, 15 Hail Marys. Uh, And I've actually prayed them. They were in that uh, prayer booklet that I was given as a kid. They are beautiful. They're very moving, very uh, touching. They really lift our heart in love to our crucified Savior. And uh, I just think that they're beautiful. And it's a great reminder of how much Jesus suffered for us. And it helps us to give thanks to God for what he did for us. So I highly encourage you to find these 15 prayers, pray with them, meditate on them, and let these words that Jesus spoke to Bridget penetrate your heart as well. Well, Bridget, as she continued to receive visions from the Lord, she had a desire to suffer even more for Jesus. She wanted to be uh, united with him. She wanted to be connected with him. And it was hard for her to do that while she was living in the lavish life of the court. Remember, she was still uh, very much involved with the royal court. She was rich. She was wealthy. Despite all of her generosity, she still had a lot of money. And so Bridget decided to take on extra suffering for herself in order to be more easily connected to her suffering Jesus, who she loved so much. And so she started to take on uh, more intense fasting. She would go without food. She would uh, suffer with that. She would sleep on a sack of straw. So forget about the big bed she had ordered for her and all. She slept on a sack of straw. Uh, Even sometimes she would burn her arms in order to remind herself constantly of the wounds that Jesus had suffered for her, that the scars that Jesus suffered for her, she would remember those by burning her own arms. But even though she was adding all these sufferings to her own life, 
other sufferings were coming her way that she had no control of. Because when she was in her 40s, her husband unfortunately died while he was on a pilgrimage, and she was left a widow. Now, at this time, her children were old enough to take care of themselves. They were adults. And so God began to show Bridget that his new plans for her were to start a new foundation, a new community of both men and women to live in religious life. He wanted her to found this new religious community. Jesus told her the rule of life that her followers should live by, that they should spend their time in prayer in study, that they would live simple lives, give away a lot of their money so that they could use all of their excess wealth to assist the poor of the city generously. They would be devoted to Jesus, the most holy savior. And uh, Bridget even designed the clothing that they would wear, which would symbolize their devotion to Jesus who had suffered for them. And so she designed this headdress uh, that the women in the community would wear. It was this habit that had uh, a crown made out of metal with red points, five red points to symbolize Jesus's crown and the, the bloody wounds that he suffered for us. So it would be an order devoted to Jesus the Savior, venerating and honoring him for the passion that he had suffered to save us. So after she had received all these visions from Jesus, these marching orders, these plans for this new order, uh, Bridget had to make the long journey to Rome. She had to go to Rome to seek the Pope's permission to found this new order. She couldn't just do it all by herself. She needed the Pope's permission. And so she traveled to Rome with some companions to petition the Pope for this cause. The problem was the Pope wasn't in Rome. And that was a problem because you see the Pope had been pressured to leave Rome behind and to move to a place called Avignon, France. And so he had moved to Avignon with all of his papal court, and he had moved there because he was influenced and pressured to do so by uh, French clergy, by the French king, and, and there was a reason that they wanted this. You see, for over 60 years, the Pope had lived a life of luxury and ease in France, and he was avoiding his rightful duties in Rome. And the duties that he had there as Pope, because the French king wanted to have him in France to have more control over the church there. And so it was a very uh, demoralizing and confusing time for Catholics. Can you imagine what that would be like? Uh, their leader was absent, and he seemed to be under the control of the French king. And so it left Catholics all over the world confused about who their leader was, what he was doing. It was a very uh, confusing time. In the Pope's absence, his city of Rome was in a state of chaos. There was two different Italian families who were feuding with each other. Uh, they were fighting in the streets. And so crime and violence and political unrest was rampant. Uh, without the Pope's leadership, the, the Roman bishops and abbots and priests, they were doing pretty much whatever they wanted to do. They were living uh, pretty scandalous lives of sin. They were selling church titles for money and power. They were giving away church positions to sometimes even their own family, even their own illicit children. And so it was a messed up situation. And to top all of it off, uh, the Black Plague was ravaging the city. And so many of the Romans were sick. They were dying in terrible poverty. And so you can imagine why it was easy for the Pope to leave his responsibilities in Rome behind, to just live a life of calm and luxury in France, even though it wasn't the right thing for him to do. Well, Bridget, when she got to Rome and she saw uh, the disastrous state that the city of Rome was in, she decided to get to work right away. She showed her now characteristic generosity to the poorest in the city. She would bravely go to take care of plague victims. She had no fear of getting sick herself. And she would go to different churches all over Rome. She would spend time praying in each chapel, praying, earnestly praying for the revival of the city, that the people would turn back to the Lord Jesus and leave their sin behind. She visited with the church leaders and she encouraged them to leave their sinful and their abusive lifestyles behind to actually serve the church instead of serving themselves. She told them what God wanted them to do, how he wanted them to live. And with many of them, she gave pretty harsh messages that she had received from God himself, warning them to repent 
before it was too late. Bridget had no fear doing what she thought was right in order to bring renewal in that city. She wrote letters to secular rulers and princes and kings, urging them to stop their sinful practices, to convert their lives, to stop feuding, to stop their jealous wars that destroyed lives for the sake of their greed and their and their lust for power. She was uh, championing the rights of the poor and the vulnerable. She even wrote letters to the Pope himself. She encouraged him to leave France behind, to stop shirking his responsibility, and to come back to Rome where he belonged. She was a bold woman. She had no problem telling the Pope that he was not doing what he was supposed to be doing. He was supposed to be back in Rome ruling as Pope. Now, as a result of all of this, you can imagine Bridget caused quite a stir in the city of Rome and even throughout all of Europe, as many of the poor and the sick who she had generously helped, uh, they loved her as their protector. They rallied, they turned their lives around, they came back to Jesus. Uh, many of them heard and received her message, uh, but she also made quite a few enemies, as you can imagine. Um, because she challenged people. She challenged people who were in power. She rebuked them for their lifestyles of sin. She made them feel ashamed, really, of what they were doing. And so they were furious with her. No one likes to be made to feel uh, ashamed. And so they were very angry with her. Uh, since it was well known that Bridget was still receiving visions from God and messages from him, some of her enemies decided that they would twist her words, twist her story in order to discredit her. And so they spread lies that she was a dangerous witch who was seeing these visions and she was uh, involved with the dark arts and that she needed to be stopped. And they were so successful in that. And at one point, an angry mob surrounded her house and threatened to burn it down with Bridget still inside. But when Bridget consulted Jesus, he told her that she would come to no harm. And so she calmly told all of her terrified household not to be afraid to keep going about their day. They would be safe. And they were safe. Their house never burned down because God protected Bridget from her enemies. She eventually received what she had lobbied and prayed for for years because the Pope left France behind and returned to Rome. Finally, Bridget was overjoyed at his return uh, but she was soon disappointed to learn that even though the Pope had come back to Rome and he even allowed her to found a new convent, he didn't allow her to teach these new nuns and monks to live according to the rule of life that she had received from Jesus. Rather, the Pope said her followers needed to follow another monastery's rule of life, which was really discouraging news for Bridget. And Bridget at this point was worn out from her travels from her work serving the poor, for lobbying for renewal in the church. And so after receiving this discouraging news, soon after, she died at the age of 70, seemingly like she had unfulfilled this mission that God had given her. But her order, which would eventually be called the Brigitines in her honor, spread throughout Europe in the years after she died. And in addition to that, her dream of the Pope returning back to Rome was realized, this time for good, because uh, only three years after her death, the Pope had moved back to France. So even though she had failed in her life to achieve the establishment of her order, even though she had failed to bring the Pope permanently back to Rome, her efforts eventually paid off. Because after her death, her Brigitine order spread throughout the world. They're still around today. They still wear the same headdress that she designed back in her lifetime, and the Pope returned back to Rome, just as she had prayed for. Now, Bridget, she is an amazing saint. She's an amazing mystic, religious founder. She was prophetic. But one of the main things that I think we can imitate in her life is her generosity. We can't all have mystical visions. We can't all found religious communities, but we can be generous. Now, Bridget, she wasn't poor. She was from a high-class family. She served in the royal court. She corresponded with religious and secular leaders all over Europe, but she didn't let the wealth get to her head. She didn't let her wealth control her. She tried to live simply, even sometimes penitentially in suffering, so that she had more to give away. She wanted to give away all the wealth that God had given her to others who were less fortunate. 
And that's a good lesson for us. It's a good question to constantly be asking myself, am I generous? Like, do I want to see my possessions serve only myself? Or do I see that my possessions ultimately belong to God? That God has given me everything that I have in order to bless others. That's the lesson that Bridget had to learn. And I believe that uh, in our culture, often it can be so easy to just amass as much stuff as we can to serve our own needs. But God has given us our wealth, our riches, whatever we have. He's given it to us, not for our own sake only, but to bless others who are less fortunate. Jesus had to remind Bridget to be generous. And maybe through her life that you just heard about, this is a reminder for you that your wealth is not actually your own, that it all belongs to God at the end of the day, and he's letting you use it. He's made you a steward of the gifts that he's given you. So don't be possessive of your money. Don't cling to your stuff. Be like St. Bridget. Ask her to show you how to be generous like she was. So let's pray for that now as we ask for St. Bridget of Sweden's intercession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Bridget, you lived the virtue of generosity. Help us to desire to give of what we have been given. And even if we don't feel like it, even if we don't feel like giving away our stuff, if we feel like keeping it all to ourselves, help us to work on being generous like you are, realizing that all of it is a gift from God. Bridget, you had a deep love for the suffering Jesus, for the Lord Jesus who suffered and died for sinners like you and me. Help us to realize just how much Jesus suffered, that he bled and died for us so that we could be forgiven and saved. St. Bridget of Sweden, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.